Ahoy ahoy! Uh, welcome to uh, my channel, another one of these videos. Uh, although this time uh, we're gonna do a little bit different because I've been getting a lot of um, requests to uh, you know show how I make my slip cases. So I guess it's time to do that now. So as you can see, I'm using a, a, a different, the industrial <laughs> grade table for this. And I'm using my um, phone's uh, default microphone because I need to, you know, I need to have some movement, you know. So here we are. Okay, let me just get that wire out of the way. Okay, um, first things first, um, I'm not gonna be doing the actual, you know, building the box because it's already been built. And this is, uh, this box is for this super heavy book. The Invisibles Omnibus. This is actually this is actually the second time I'm making this because uh, the first one, well, it got water damaged. Fortunately, the um, fortunately the book the book isn't damaged in any way. So you, you gotta got that one reason why you should have uh, slip cases on your big books. And um, yeah, anyway. So uh, I will, however, post a link in the description on building the actual box. Uh, it's from uh, this wonderful guy named uh, Sage Reynolds and the video is a bit old, more than 10 years and yet I used the exact same um, techniques. Well, not exactly because I don't have the, the equipment that he has. So I cut the boards using um, my trusty knife and my you know rulers and the, the stuff that you can see here um and this is the the box itself the interior is a uh what's this the a uh, coated white paper i used to use a coated black paper but i didn't get um supplies or rather my old supplier i couldn't get it from them anymore so i'm switching to these uh much better um, coated white paper and it's already built and I've already um, taken and so the next step after you build the box is you uh, design the covers which I already have and just to uh, give you a look at um, I couldn't uh, take or insert videos on how I did it. I used Photoshop but you, you could also use other software like uh, was that GIMP uh, or something like that Gimli, <laughs> I don't know. But um, basically, what you're be gonna be working on um, is this. Um, my the printing service that I use uh, could only print uh, uh, within a uh, sheet, a 13 inch by 19 inch sheet. So for big big books like this, obviously, it won't fit. So I have to split it into two. You could. So this is it. So sheet one is this, which consists of the the. The face which could be the front or the back I designate this the front but because I displayed my books out this way but you could also consider this the front and this the you know display this out it's, it's up to you really um, but uh, all anyway the um, you will have this so you got or at least this is what I how I lay out the sheets so the face and the top and the spine on one sheet and then the face and the bottom on the other the, um, this is this is the uh, one inch flap which we, you will see later how it how it fits into all of this uh, one inch flaps here and then these are uh, about a centimeter or so I, I use one and a half centimeter because I don't then have this this ruler is exactly one and a half centimeters so I just you know use this as a guide I don't have to cut a separate um, guide every time so and then that's where this part will, will overlap and then overlap overlap basically these are the things that you need but they will be invisible in the final um the final version so yeah you can, you can pause your um video while watching this but this is it now uh, what you will need to do is just um you know create a you know the graphics um, the graphics are you, uh, you know, the top at the bottom. What I normally do is I put uh, you know a couple of covers or whatever graphics here, the logo in here, 
and then maybe some copyright stuff at the bottom or attribution or whatever so what you will end up eventually or what you will end up with eventually is these so this is um, I, I, I took some inspiration from um, Andy Warhol with this so so you can see this is you got the front cover which is this the a face and then the top here the blank area this uh, I measured that to fit top spine right here which is very um inspired by, by the Beatles which if you read the first issue there is a Beatles connection there I don't know about um, Andy Warhol though but um keen eye uh, keen eye the uh, viewers would notice that this is also an Andy Warhol thing uh it's a cover of an album but yeah I, I changed it so it says the Invisibles and you know King Mob because uh, there's a featuring Nico at the original on the original album but anyway so that's the f uh, face the bottom this is the bo bottom white area I, oh wait it's, it's not visible but that's the bottom the, this white area here and you got the copyright stuff in there and then there will be overlaps and it's a lot easier to work with if you have got you know uh, blocks of just solid colors or in this case it's white but you know solid areas because the um, overlaps won't be as um, obvious the, these are printed on 170 GSM paper coated paper similar to the interiors and they let their let they have uh, uh, cold laminated and matte I, I like but you can also use gloss I like matte they're easier to work with but you can also do gloss now I also marked the areas where I don't, is it visible in the video but you can see this is part of the print there um, these are the areas where the the fold lines and I pre before recording this video I traced the folds using pencil I there's I I by shining a light underneath here um, it's in a different part of this room so I can't really show you but um, if you have one of those illustration illustration tables used by animators or um, illustrators you know the one with the light at the bottom that's perfect that's how you, what you should use if you have one I don't have one so I just shown a, one of these uh, lights Oop. okay so there you go as you can see I uh, traced there so uh, essentially what I will need to do is match the corners of the box onto these lines so that they um, you know align okay and that is where we start this is where now another thing about the Sage Reynolds video is you um it's a full video that goes all the way to installing the uh, or installing the outer outer um, material the key difference is that he uses materials that you would you know a full letter like um wait where is it oh here it is um, something like this um, it's used in uh, book binding and it's yeah he uses that kind of paper and it's it's cool um, although yeah the cuts are very similar to what I'm, I do uh, or rather I got that from him and then I um, sort of incor incorporated my own methods because I'm using th different material and different um, and also you know graphics that's another thing which is something you uh, do you you will eventually need to figure out how to do so that being said this is where we sort of uh, diverge multiple timelines if you will and yeah so this is that we have the built box and we have our tools which I will I I know I'm supposed to list my tools but I kind of forgot and so just to make notes of what my tools are going to be or I, I'll just make commentaries about the tools um, you know as the video progresses and have your coffee ready when working on these things you know 
you gotta both hydrate and dehydrate yourself. Okay, first things first, um, always start with a sharp knife. So I was using this earlier, so I have to sharpen it now. The um, My rule is one sharpen uh one sh uh, sharpen it once per uh per box so i've been working on some cd well cd slip cases earlier so yeah i guess i need to sharpen this so and just to make sure you don't leave sharp objects lying around i just put it in tape here and then just close it like this so um, whoever's picking up the trash won't, you know, or whoever's sorting on the trash won't um, get cut these little random shards of metal. And so you got your knife right here and you got your trusty ruler, which we won't use later. But now, um, the Sage, another difference with the Sage Reynolds video is he uses a, a roller to, uh, uh, to apply his glue. Um, I used to do that, but I find that this uh mod podge brush is much easier and um they're also yeah they're uh, there are also other sizes but i just happened to this is for me this works but you know it could be a different thing for you uh they are called mod podge i think it's a type of paste i don't know and then another thing is i um i use pva pva glue to apply this but i'm using this old um bottle uh, another well technically it is pva but the, the this particular type is a bit too acidic so i just retained the bottle because it um, as you will see later uh, it can uh, the nozzle it's resealable it's refillable and it you know applies easily and it doesn't you know waste as, as much glue okay um 12 minutes into the video and uh, we haven't actually started so there we go okay let's do this now um first thing we're gonna do uh put on is the back or what i consider is the back you know the back and the bottom the fewer outer panels you have five panels and this is two out of five two out of five meaning um you gotta face the bottom the face the bottom the other face or the front and then the top and then the spine so five panels this is the one that has the least one the two two panels out of five so and then um, this is going to be the back. Um, just uh, keep an eye. Uh, I marked this the top. And uh, this, my friends, is the back. Just to avoid confusion with the F for face when I built this. Okay. Okay, glue. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply glue. You can uh, get as artistic as you want with how you apply this. You know, I just... Um, with, whenever I'm using a new brush, I sort of just put on a little bit extra glue in there because um, your since this is a sponge, it will absorb some of the glue into its center. So you some you might end up with um, dry spots. And you notice I'm also feathering the strokes towards diagonally and towards the corners is important because these areas see, see that it's not wait is it is it even? okay it also helps to have a light you can you can shine a light like this see so if, if you need to to spot any um areas where glue, you might not have applied glue see see what i mean it's um these are dry spots spots there so we will hey there's a hair in here hold on you are not you are not supposed to be there okay uh, another tip is always have uh, wet wipes with you or when working with glue because um, if I mean you, you could also use a dry rag or whatever to you know clean your hands you know just in case you do get your some glue in your hands but the um an important thing thing here is that you don't your cl hands are clean because if you, if you let's say touch an area that's not supposed to have glue in it and it's something that's visible um either you know it might 
result in lumps or things that you don't want or stains if, especially in, with this kind of interior material where it's white you don't want stains or you know it, signs that it was touched by a dirty hand <laughs> okay we have that oops see it dries ever so quickly Gotta put in some extra blue love. Okay, that should be enough. Okay, now the top is here. No, that's the bottom. That's the top. Okay. And then, okay, so we're just going to align. Um, since we're gonna align this at the bottom because it's closer to me, but you know, if it shouldn't make a difference if um, whether you do it. If you measure, took your measurements correctly, then it shouldn't matter. Although, of course, alignment is important if, um, in, in certain cases where you have different, you know, blocks of colors. Okay, so pressing the corners now, committing to the alignment there. And this is where we burnish as quick as we can. Basically, we're squeezing out air pockets and um, pressing the surface onto the board. Hmm. I was looking at the camera, didn't realize this was off. You might be wondering, um, could can you use a regular glue, you know, this brand here if can you use it yeah you can although the the key i I'll actually keep a bottle of this somewhere in my tools uh as part of my 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 arsenal because um it it works it adheres better in uh you know joint uh joints like uh these spots where um they need to be adhered strongly and quickly because the thing with PVA glue is it um, it dries ah, just a teeny bit slower but sometimes you know even seconds as anyone who has ever done push-ups will tell you even seconds can be really slow you know okay here we go um, it's now burnished flat um, keep an eye on the corners they should be they should be they shouldn't be um, uh, popping up from. Okay, I'm gonna flip it. And this is where we make our first cut. Um, let me just move the thing here. Uh, okay, there we go. I think I should, you know, I should have a higher view, but I can't seem to get a good, okay, cheers. Okay, um, so what we're doing here is, wait, ah oh, man, this is a mess. Okay, here we go. Okay, what we're doing here is we're take up leaving the inch flap as we illustrated earlier. This is the, we're gonna be cutting these parts now, the inch flap from here, so. The, this ruler is exactly one inch wide and I'm using it as a guide to cut. You can, uh, you can uh, cut a piece of, you know, excess board. When you build these things, you'll have a lot of excess boards. You could cut an inch wide thing and you cut, and uh, you know, that you could use that as your cutting guide if you don't have um, something like this. And there's no, it doesn't, actually have to be one inch but I find that one inch is a lot easy um, yeah that's it's a sweet spot it um, it's just right it's not too shallow and yeah and it's not too deep um, what up when cutting uh, make it make sure that uh, you're not you know pressing too hard on the blade it's it's better to uh, cut make multiple cuts multiple but gentle cuts over uh, 
you know, going heavy handed with the blade. As you can see this blade, since we've uh, sharpened it earlier, this is still pretty much, you know, really sharp. I can, um, I can cut really easy. You know, doesn't, doesn't even have, to, doesn't, I didn't, didn't even exert that much pressure on it, but it, it cut good. <laughs> okay. And then we're just gonna, um, we're gonna cut here outside. Okay, I think that did it. And we're gonna do the same for this side. You know, I gotta move my coffee. I'm so used to having my tools to the right that uh, I forgot that I'm recording a video. But yeah, here it is. Um, I don't know what's visible down there, but I'm cutting here. So j just gentle, but two cuts. Okay, now um, let me just get this small thing here because Seems to be missing, but I was just using it last, last night. It's weird. Ah, here it is. Okay, great. Okay, so what um, this what this is is it's um piece of the board, and then I got the material, the inner lining, same as this, stuck on one. So basically, this side is one th the thickness of one board and one material. And this is the thick, thick uh, twice that. Um, and what we're gonna do, this is gonna be useful later. It's pretty easy, just cut two boards and, and glue them, make sure they're flat and yeah. Anyway, uh, this is what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna put it in there and mark thickness of one board in here. There we go. And then I'm gonna do the same. here which I hope you can see okay now you is it visible um, you should see there's a mark there so what we're gonna do is cut cut a piece from about the thickness of one board here but we're not gonna cut just the entire thing. We're gonna leave a diag diagonal part. Um, I'm gonna get my angle ruler right here and find. Just uh, I'm just gonna eyeball this, but uh, basically I'm just looking for that junction between. Hmm, not as easy as I thought, but and then there. So I left that, and then just gonna make a diagonal cut here. This is also on the Sage Reynolds move, uh, video, by the way. So you know, this is what it should look like after you cut it. So I'm just gonna do the same for this side, and well, later when we uh, attach that second sheet, we're also gonna do the same. These aren't. In case you're wondering, these aren't. Uh, we're gonna. We're not doing uh, decorative cuts. These are very practical cuts, which um, I will show you later once the box is finished. And there's a reason why you should um, try to be as um, accurate as possible when you, you know, cut these things. So, here we go. Okay. So we're, we're gonna uh, proceed with the rest. So um, we're gonna cut, leave the centimeter. We're now gonna trim this so that we have this, these uh, things with diagonal lines here. So 
you can have uh, you can you can cut a guide that's you know one centimeter maybe or in, in my case it's one and a half right here so yeah okay light and easy cuts again don't exert too much pressure okay i'm just uh, gonna use put this in here so it you can also use a triangle or um, uh, an angled uh, you know triangle ruler if you don't have um this angled ruler right here basically I'm just i'm um, doing this to avoid you know the ruler uh this centimeter ruler tilting while i'm cutting because when you um you are exerting pressure on it and the lightest pressure could push your cut out of true so here we go and i'm also removing this without removing this part and then i'm gonna do the same for this side because um the other sheet will have the spine and overlap here so yeah just bear with me while We make light cuts, cold cuts. Sometimes I get weird notions about cold cuts. Okay, yeah. Again, angle ruler just to prevent the thing from tilting. Especially in this case, it's pretty. We're gonna make a pretty wide cut all the way here, so we gotta keep it uh, separated. <laughs> we gotta keep it um, straight as much as possible. Again. Light cuts. Light cuts save the day. This, well, some of these you don't really have to be. Uh, there is a little bit of margin for error in some of these parts. Like here, I'm going to be cutting this part later on, so it shouldn't be a problem. So now, um, where is it? to keep yourselves organized kids <laughs> okay I'm missing a tool that I was just holding a while ago here, here, here it is um, this is I just saw this um, a, re, a plastic version of this on a book binding website I forgot the name but it's basically a jig that's used for book binding where um, you cut flaps diagonally and then you fold it in I well, I found another use for it here um, because I needed uh, to cut this diagonally, but I don't want it like, you know, straight diagonal. I need to have some extra, um, extra gap so that it folds neatly into the here. And this seemed to fit the bill. So where's the knife? Okay. So we just cut it like that. And then we cut that excess here and here. So what we're getting is an, an octagonal um, shape cut. Oh, hold on, let me just get rid of this. I'll show it to you close, close up. There. Yeah, an octagon. Um, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna do the same here, but not here. Hmm. So I'm gonna cut this side first. 
one and two and then okay got it got it and good okay okay so this is what it looks like now it's looking um, a lot like a real product um I'm, you have a bone folder here and this is you can get the bone folder from just about well you know just a few years ago you could re couldn't really find this locally but um you know i i saw some craft shops selling this is a an essential book binding tool it, it it you can use it for creasing and you know as you saw earlier i'm using it for um adhering the sheet onto the case so here it is um just, we're just gonna apply a line of blue right here and use the chisel shaped part to spread it evenly. Um, cool thing about having a sponge slash brush here is it, um, if you happen to apply too much glue, you can always, you know, just use other parts to sort of absorb it. It's much better in getting your, <laughs> your hands dirty. So here we go. I'm just um, slowly and I'm doing a sort of folding motion right here and outwards um, to ensure that there's no um, crease and that um, it doesn't, you know, result in lumps. And then once you got that flat, just burnish it, but not too heavy handed and careful at, at the edges that you might end up you know, imp impacting these parts and ripping them which is not what you want to happen i'm using the sharp part to flatten certain the pointed not sharp but um yeah i'm using it to flatten them and this is what it should look like okay i'm just gonna go ahead and do the same to the seam at the spine so same one line of glue and just uh, spread it for some reason that um, peanut butter and jelly song that uh, you know plays on children's my niece loves that song the uh, peanut butter and jelly song and um, she she has now discovered the joys of peanut butter and jelly she consumes the peanut butter faster than I do and I you know, I know kids are not supposed to consume much sugar, but what can you do? So you're probably wondering why I didn't, um, I didn't just leave it square. Why did I make that cut? The thing is, it reduces the if if ever there's uh, the cut with, uh this this was cut at an angle and there you might get a an, uh, a protruding flap here so the diagonal cut avoids that but it's also make sure makes sure that the corners are also covered so there that's your um that's the seam it's not what it seem seems Okay, so we're, we are going to stop here for now because we're going to apply the front sheet. We're not gonna adhere, adhere the bottom just yet because uh, there's also a seam here that this part will need to go over. Okay, so I'm just, um, we're, we are now out, you putting the, this is the front end, spine and top. So let's flip that, and like the other sheet, I've also pre-marked this. I will need to align, uh, I mean to make sure that the top aligns here. Because, you know, I, I sort of have a, a better margin for error here, so we are here right now. Okay. 
something like that. So let us apply glue. Hmm. I'm gonna try a circular pattern this time. I know I'm just having fun. The um, thing is, you can just do whatever you want with this. I mean, it's gonna get brushed or whatever. Anyway, so brush. Uh, right now, you don't have to worry. At this point, you don't have to worry about the, um, whether or not the parts are, you know, not covered. If you're just um, spreading the glue out onto different areas. And you're sort of uh, redistributing the excess glue from one part and putting it in another. So, uh, and then this is where you do the diagonal strokes that I, I showed you earlier. What this does is it, you know, you crisscross the strokes and it pushes to the corners, which, is, which are some of the most important areas. Well, all of them are, but you know, the, the corners usually get underpainted, so, uh, or rather undercoated, under glued. So, and the thing is, they're very crucial to the process. The way I see it, it looks like uh, this video is gonna be an hour long, so, you know, I urge you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Uh, yeah, you know, and like the video, please. If and my other videos too, if um, you know that really helps with a this entire algorithm thing that I still have no idea what's about. But well, I do. But you know, anyway. Okay, so I'm just aligning this. Need to make sure that the corners align with the markings and if you like i said earlier if you did your measurements right they should just fall into place like so again press the corners to commit to it make sure it doesn't you know get peeled when you do this when you flip hand under flip or basically just um you know just like cooking okay so burnish again firmly but gently is the key, uh, is the key here um we are pushing the air pockets and just uh, making sure that every millimeter of the surface is adhered so if you need to rub it again gently not too heavy you you might gouge the surface this is a both both sides are Andy inspired by Andy Warhol, by the way. So, oh, I mentioned that already. The logo is, of course, a riff on the Beatles' White Album, which, if you've been seeing the other videos on my channel, you you will you can tell that it's my favorite Beatles album of all time, which I will also um talk about in a future video. I, I, I'm actually planning this comparison video for the all the CD editions, but um, some of them are still on the way. Oh, don't worry about the tape here. I'm just uh, this is laminated, so it, it's not gonna pull the art. Uh, be careful if if you use laminate unlaminated um, art, which I don't recommend using, by the way. Um, it, you might tear the artwork, so no, that's a no-no. I'm just using it because I need access to this part this part later on. Um, okay, let's do, again, first things first. The uh, inch flap. And I'm just uh, trying to be really careful about the cut right now. Okay. As you can see, this is, uh, as you can probably hear it, this is pretty noisy neighborhood. Well, not that noisy. I mean, it's still a residential area, but, you know, the public transport um, situation here is um, unique to this region is, um, I think, the kindest uh, phrase that comes to mind. Okay, so we're, I'm also cutting the same thing that we did earlier. So, oh, 
before we cut, you gotta mark it. Yeah. So here, marking and marking. The, uh, this mechanical pencil, by the way, it's really great. It's a uh, Zebra Delgard, um, and it's great because it um, the mechanism sort of distributes the pressure so that you 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 you, had, you don't break too many pencil leads. It can be frustrating if um, you're using a you know ordinary. Oh. Okay, sorry. It. Can be frustrating when um. You know that old saying: measure twice, cut once. And that certainly applies here. You know, I didn't cut that long side. I'm gonna do it now. There we go. Okay, that's one, and I'm gonna do it this side. Is it visible on the camera? You know, I, yeah, it's not. Okay. And then, square ruler. Is it a square ruler or anger angle ruler? Um, if you know, if you are buying tools for this purpose, I recommend uh, you know getting metal tools instead of plastic. Because the thing with thing with plastic rulers is when you you know you might end up shaving part of the ruler <laughs> and uh, make it less than you know, straight as it should be, which happened to me. So I, when, when, use, when using things for cutting, it's always exclusively um, metal or, uh, you know, one of those temporary guides that you, that you see me um, use or a cut. And no, you haven't actually seen me do it, but yeah, it's, uh, when I need to cut, that, you know, like what I did with the with the thingy here. Yeah, this is just I just made this myself. It's um, thinner gauge um, board, and these are right angles. Very useful, actually. Okay, we are cutting. Sometimes it can be difficult to, um, you know, concentrate talking while trying to <laughs> not get your fingers cut in these things, but, you know, can you do? Okay, so that's, let's make another cut here before bringing it all home here. Now we're cutting this part too, the same as what we did with the with this side. Okay, so this is what it should like now. I should look like now. And you have the top right here. Okay, there we go. And this is the top panel which will which will fold in later but um, before we do the top and bottom we have to do the spine first so oops okay okay the knife goes here And 
and then we're just gonna leave a centimeter um, flap here because that is that's gonna go over here okay I, I usually do this from the other side but um, gotta make it visible for the video so here we go okay so now we have the um, spine I also need to cut this oh yeah you know before we might as well do this by the way since we are all here So that's one from here to here. And then this is, hmm, I'm gonna need a reverse angle for this. Although to be honest, I could, I should be able, able to cut, hmm, can I actually remember how I did it? <laughs> Silly me. Oh yeah, I should still keep that. Okay, I'm just done. Just looking for the point where it meets the others and that, that's where I will start my cut, like that. I'm gonna just mark this. And then look for the part. Okay, wait, push it just here. Here we go. And then I'm just gonna look for the part where it meets that angle. And cut from there. Okay. okay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Should not have done that. Um I Okay. I could just do this. And we're uh, gonna burnish this part first. By blue. And just absorb some of that excess glue in there because it's not supposed to be that thick. Good lord. Okay, then I'm just gonna push, push, push. You notice I'm not pushing it straight down immediately. You know, I have to push it diagonally first because that takes care of the, you know, stuff. The, um, it pushes it outward instead of inward. creating this flat surface instead of, you know, instead of causing it to bunch up in the middle. Very important. All right, okay. And then I'm gonna just crease this. This forms the spine. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it, I'm cutting it real close there because this is, this is a pretty thick look. So I'm cutting it close to the print area right there. You know what? Let me just let me 
gonna just cut this. I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be using this until later. So let me just remove this first. Nope. 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 See, I should take my own advice and use. No. Kind of awkward putting the ruler against something like this that doesn't. Here we go. Okay. Yeesh. Okay. Okay. Real professional, you. Okay. Just needed that to go flat when we do this. So what's gonna happen is, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take this. So that this is the spine flap, um, and then use my pencil to mark the edge of the spine, and I'm gonna use an eraser to clean this the pencil lead off this part. There you go. Okay. So now we have, this is the edge of the spine. What we're gonna do is, or what I'm gonna do is put a double-sided tape. The thing is, um, the reason why I'm using double-sided tape is because this um, PVA glue doesn't work on laminated surfaces. This is plastic. So, you know, if what you don't want is the flap coming off peeling off over time and until they start they manufacture a uh, and gum this is the thing with um, stickers and this uh, double-sided tape is it's a gum type of adhesive so you know it sticks a lot better compared to um, PVA the pr um, you're probably wondering why didn't I just um, print the entire thing on sticker paper? Um, well, the thing is, it's it requires a lot more precision. Um, Factory-made slip cases are typically made. Um, let me just fix this. What's going on? There we go. Factory made slip cases are, uh, you, they use that kind of uh, sticker, you know, manufactured sticker paper. Problem is, uh, while we now could get good prints on sticker paper, there's no room for error there. If, you know, like what I was doing earlier with aligning the, um, when I was aligning the, bo uh, the box, you know, if, if you make one small mistake, that's all over for you. So, um, what I'm doing now is I'm sticking this to the cutting board because this this surface here is slippery and you don't want your ruler slipping for the next step. I'm gonna stick both of them, the ruler and the Okay, so we, I'm just uh, positioning, gonna position my ruler. Um, you don't want it exactly, you know, uh, exactly match, uh, matching the edges. You want it just um, offset by just about a millimeter because, oh, okay, no, 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 no. I'm supposed to cut that in two, so I have to move this just a tiny bit. Um, downward. There we go. I keep my head keeps bumping the camera, so sorry if <laughs> the video is a little bit shaky right now. Okay. We're just gonna remove uh, this part. I'm gonna cut that off. Um, what am I doing? Oh yeah, this is for the ruler. 
So I'm I'm going going to uh, position the ruler just about a millimeter off from the edge that we marked here. Um, if you notice, I also put the tape just on the line itself, so it's you know that's your visual cue because if you tape over the line, then you might not see where you're cutting. So there we go, just. Uh, no, just a touch. And then just put the ruler there. Yep. Okay, good. And do not... Uh, this is where I must place an importance on cutting it with a light touch here because really you could easily jerk the ruler out of true and since you can't test um well you should be able to test the cut there but there we go Um, if done correctly, you should always test the edges before adhering them, just in case. So, as you can see, the edge is just offset just a little bit. See, it's not um, touching. Thing is, you should have a slight thing, whatever it's called there, but yeah. Let me just clean this up a little bit. It's not... Okay. It's just a shadow. Okay, so you have that. We are now going to stick that part. We're going to trim this later when um, we... After we stick it. Because we got to be... Got to cut it like that. Okay. We do be cutting it like that. Mm, I think I need to cut this more... Um, closer to the edge. Oh, where's the small ruler? Because it's, it's, it's going to be overlapping the main thing anyway. So, just need to make sure it's parallel and cut. There. I'm going to be doing the same um, later on in a different part. Okay. Now we apply PVA, good old PVA. I'm gonna need, need to refill this later, I guess. Just, I really don't have tips on how much you should, how much glue you should put in. It's just, you know, I'm just eyeballing it and I'm just making sure it's, um, I guess it should be probably as wet as you know when you, a freshly peeled sticker probably i mean i'm not it's not actually wet is it it's more like you know check your light and there should be a you shouldn't see streaks of white i i think that's a good um indicator of properly applied glue you should see it wet but you don't shouldn't see streaks of streaks of glue anywhere and before you stick it or rather, no, just, just, um, you know, putting it because it's easier to peel. I don't, I don't want it to peel it. Ow. Okay, look at that. See, that is why you always check your thing. I, I under applied glue on some parts. Okay, now we're ready. Okay, just push this part first just you know push it forward so it doesn't have bad creases in there and then take off the ad take off the adhesive like so and I, I'm just I, you, this is what I do I just flip it and then I burnish it upwards
there we go the adhesive here should uh make it easy for you know the rest to attach so uh you know to adhere so right now i'm just burnishing this to make sure to push out bubbles always push towards the open ends if you are pushing out bubbles so that is our spine right there oops hey uh, there we go. shouldn't be there okay okay now we have to deal with these flaps um we, we we're gonna turn these in before we go to we hit the top and bottom and then it's just you know it's a matter of sending it home okay and then here as well okay yeah we're just gonna i'm gonna cut a 45 degree cut, cut here but I'm gonna make it. So where is that gauge? It's, it always disappears on me. I'm just gonna use this gauge, but I'm gonna f just to make you know to establish a 45 degree angle. But I'm gonna be following it with the uh, more um, something that's or another cut that sticks more to the edge as soon as i get rid of these Oops. oh man always um keep your workplace clean kids <laughs> okay yeah kind of hard doing that from there let's do it from here Yeah, it is kind of difficult, but let's do it. Oh man, I was hoping this is accurate. It's not, but I think that's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect, but this is gonna be buried with everyone else here, so. Uh, or rather it's going to be covered by this so just a line of glue right here small one and i don't think i sh should have done that the um i had enough glue on the sponge so i'm just gonna fold you in There you go. Nice 45 degree angle. That's not exactly, not precisely 45 degrees, but you know what I mean. Um, then we're gonna do this here. I just noticed, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of a bit off, but yeah, it's, it's a bit off center. I think I goofed up the measurements a bit, but it's a good thing with a block of color or non-color in this case it's not you know and i didn't bother bother to cut a 45 degree cut there because i need that part covered for later so here we go and burnish outwards Okay. Mm -hmm. That looks clean. Okay, now we are now going to do the last two panels, the top and the bottom. So let's again what we're gonna do here is 
of mark these. Mark these, the bottom. Using the pencil that seems to have disappeared, here it is. I'm just flattening the side down from, from the inside. My hand is inside this. And just I'm applying force at the bottom panel so it doesn't, you know, it stays as flat as possible. Um, eraser, because we need that part as clean as possible. Though it is hard to see with all the shadows. Shoot. Now I can, I can always touch up later, but I want to have a really clean install in here. So we're going to also do it the same here. And we're going to apply um, double-sided tape. The general or the rule, not general, but the, the rule for double-sided tape is if, if this touches, is it going to be adhered to this, then it, it needs a double-sided double tape. I tried other adhesives. There's this, um, it's got a letter in the bunch of four numbers, B4000, something like that. And, Um, it seems to work because it's also gum based, but the problem is it dries really fast and I can't, you know, I can't, I don't have mar any margin for error with that. What I'm going to do is apply here up to, up to that um, line. I'm just going to look in re lean in real close here and I'm just going to match the edge. And then cut, cut, cut. Okay. And then this I want to make a straight right angle cut there because I need to match this corner. Same thing from here to here because that's gonna be touching the. Okay, this is the same thing that we did with the spine, by the way. And oh, not endorsing this brand, 3M, but for now, really, it's the only brand that I know of that actually has um, lasting power. I had a batch of slip cases some time ago where I used a different, cheaper brand, and they started peeling uh just a few months down the line so you know i'm sticking with that brand again no endorsement but hey you know i am going to accept endorsement deal if they did okay we're gonna do here and then uh repeat the same process there so we're just gonna go over this once i am going to cut a small a, a small diagonal cut right here um let me just illustrate it so what's gonna happen is if this is the if this is the the board this part and this is the here to here right um we're just go we're just going to make a small cut very small about a millimeter from there and then we're gonna cut so follow that and cut straight down so it creates the same kind of overlap here so it doesn't peel off uh trust me if you cut it exactly to to the edge it's um, it's gonna be really annoying it's like i don't know it's it's just and it it will end up peeling really quickly so i'm making that cut now i don't know if it's visible in the camera or um but yeah i have that and then i'm just following it with this or the square or whatever and making that cut slowly gently but surely and there 
and then we're gonna cut this again with the just about just about a millimeter offset and I'm not gonna use glue uh, tape this time because the um, I, I could exert enough pressure in here to make sure that the straight edge doesn't slide although it would be funny if it does slide while I'm doing that so you gotta have some confidence so that's one two test make that three for safety there you go And I have this little tool here that cuts, make the round, makes round edges. So we're gonna use that, voila, rounded edge. So that goes over there later. Um, before we do that, let me just um, work on this side of things. So, you know, we're done. Okay, tape. In the meantime, enjoy the royalty-free sounds of well, this thing I found on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Okay, now you're seeing the back of my head, which I don't know if it, whether it looks I usually have to keep, uh, you know, take a really close look because I have terrible eyesight and haven't updated my prescription in a long time. So, you know, just cover your eyes if you find the back of back of my head unsavory. <laughs> okay. So again. small cut right there and okay that's good and we're nearing the end don't worry I mean after this we're just gonna I'm just gonna show you how I do turn-ins. I'll um, just turn this off first. It's casting too much shadow. Okay, that looks good. Third time's the charm. Yeah, here we go. And then we're just gonna cut, where's the trimmer? We're just gonna trim the corner. Round edge, okay. So we're, we're here, so we're gonna um, do this side first. Um, like what we did with the spine, I'm just gonna peel off a little bit of the backing paper i just learned recently it's called release paper which sounds like you know something you get when you get out of um prison or whatever <laughs> but yeah it's uh, apparently these things these slippery things are called uh release papers um let me just wipe the nozzle off starting uh, let's get clogging, clogging. not there ah yes Wipes are awesome. Segment brought to you by Hawthorne Wipes. Congrats if you got the reference. So we're just over an hour now, and yeah, it's actually proceeding just a tiny bit faster than I expected. The um, I was anticipating something like 
the length of the white album because that's usually how long it takes to finish one of these I was listening to the white album I, I so that would be four sides times 20 minutes so 80 minutes it's just yeah it tracks I'm, I'm not doing it faster than normal but I'm not slowing down either I mean you could be doing oops wipes you could be doing this much faster I don't know I mean okay so let me just peel this peel and and then just carefully Okay, that's the bottom piece. Yeah, it looks a bit off-center. I must have... But it's not off-center in the main art, so I, I think that I'm still good with it. The same here, it's not it's not off-center. So I, I'm, I, I guess I'm still in the clear. Um, okay, peel. Just a tiny bit off. And the same with this. I'm peeling the. I just peeled these parts, so it's easier to do this. The thing with PVA glue is you still need to. You, you know, there's room for error. I mean, if you. You just have to be quick. In case, you know, some. Uh, there, there are crease as well. You're, you're attaching the thing, just, you know, quickly peel it and you may have a chance. I mean, I'm not guaranteeing it will, but you know, I'm, just, I'm saying you have better chances than compared to say, um, printing this in a sticker paper. Although, you know, if you got the confidence to do it, then good for you, man. I'm not about to discount anyone. Yeah, it looks like I uh, misjudged it, and it's a good thing. However, it is a good thing that the entire thing isn't off-center. I'd be really mad if it was. Yeah, this is a little tiny bit, about maybe five millimeters off-center, but that's fine. This is intended to be, you know, off-center anyway. Okay, so we're done with most of it so we're just going to do the turn ins um with the turn ins um, we're go back to using this we're going to make two lines of one one thickness and two thickness which i will show you in a moment um okay that's one that's two thickness one thickness and then Um, similar to the marking we did with uh, this side, but this is different. This is not, this doesn't involve that. We're gonna mark that because what you want is um, an H-shaped mark right there. And what we're gonna do with that is, I'm gonna cut, cut a diagonal, a triangle from here to here. Now we're taking that out and this is what it should look like after you cut it. Hmm, let me see if I can get, get a, a close look, but that is what it should look like. Um, the reason why we're doing this is when you cut, when you make that, when you uh, push this in, when you burnish this later, um, if you don't have that cut, um, the that flap will eventually tear and it won't look good. So by having that flap, you could it would fold by default on 
obviously onto that and it would make a much cleaner installation. Something that small, imagine that. And it, um, something that's small and it makes a huge difference. Okay, we're gonna do the same here and then we're on the home stretch. Yay! I'm gonna get to, you know, you're gonna get some, if you're not eating, having popcorn or a snack right now, you know, you could, I don't know, run and get one, I guess. I mean, this is, or pause the video and yeah, get one. I mean, we're in the home stretch. This is the final act. Someone did ask me why would I upload a video, you know, wouldn't that uh, take away business from me or whatever. Um, I don't think so. The, the key difference here is um, you, sorry, I was concentrating. Well, the key difference here is that there's still um, not a lot of people are confident handling tools like this or it is a complicated test it may look you know it looks simple but the build if you count the part where uh you know we build the box then yeah it, it does seem labor intensive which is why these things are not cheap especially this is a custom one and, and not mass produced with mass produced you got um die you know, those uh, cutters, especially design cutters that um, cut and peel and assemble the entire thing. And one slip case can be assembled in as quick as three minutes, even shorter. Anyway, what I, what I just did was I burnish, uh, pr I pre-burnish the edges like so. Um, so when you fold it in, it, it won't be as difficult nor will it be as ugly um always remember to go uh do the short th these parts first and this last because this will um, go over this part so you know you gotta make sure that uh, looks clean and you have to make sure by the way that these the edges here are properly I have in, 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 properly glued, you know, they had to have enough adhesive. You don't want them popping out. And you have to do this real quick because it dries really fast. Even PVA, you can just imagine with other adhesives, right? So I'm just using this to push that end upward. So, you know, it's it lines better with the... Wait, I have a smaller... I, if you have a chisel, uh, a chisel type um, bone folder, that would also work. Uh, what I'm trying to do here is make sure that this, it doesn't curve, but goes flat against the wall because that's, this will overlap it. So, okay. And then I'll just uh, carefully burnish this part without hitting that. Just make sure that it's flat. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same for this. So just pre-burnish this this and then glue if you watched the sage reynolds video or if you're going to watch it you might notice that he he does this part of it differently in that 
he um okay wait wait hold on he does this part differently in that he uses a roller I, i've mentioned earlier that um yeah if, if that will work for you great um for me what works is this method of you know applying it from a nozzle applying the glue from a nozzle and then spreading it using a um, sponge brush you know it might work for you I don't know but okay then I'm, I'm just gonna sort of massage some of the lumps and make sure this is flat okay here we go so we're down to the last two fold-ins or turn-ins rather It's um, easier to, I find it easier to work with, with bigger slip cases. I don't know, the, even the assembly of the box, it's, it's a lot more uh, difficult to assemble or, you know, build small boxes. I, I once, I remember I tried to build one for uh the batman e1 deluxe edition and um it's harder to build okay you might you, you notice my hand is pushing from this from the top going into and also diagonally yeah i that's how i and then quickly burnish it before the uh, adhesive dries out and cause it turns into lumps or gaps um, if you're concerned because if, if you may have noticed you may have noticed that I there there is some excess um, glue over here the, don't worry about that you can just don't wipe it off that's the thing about a laminate material. You can get it, get it a bit wet. You know, it won't matter. Uh, what you should not do is use some kind of, you know, dr uh, something abrasive. That that's gonna destroy the finish and leave a uh, a scar, scar on the on the thing. So, last, this is the last panel um, turn in, and should be good to go. See how the um, that diagonal cut is it overlaps, resulting in this. See that's that's the reason why you cut that. Um, you you want to try to cut that as accurately as possible. Okay. You also notice in the Sage Reynolds video that he. Uh, burnishes it this way like you know outwards and I didn't do it because um, this is the material is different this is um, laminate meaning it's uh, more than one material you get a lot of plastic laminate in the paper so if you do that if you burnish it outwards they might separate and you'll, you'll end up with this um, you know separation that would if it might not be as obvious when you're when it's a white, you know, a mostly white slipcase, but um, on something else, maybe a an all black or whatever, that's gonna be really visible. It's gonna be really visible, and that's gonna be something. You know, you know how sometimes you you that you have this thing that um, might 
that that seems perfect except for that one little flaw and then that one little flaw is all that you can focus on that you could you know it could end up like that <laughs> so yeah okay uh finishing touch just um burnish the edges um outwards and then look for um spots where there may be um you know glue all you need to do is just wipe them with a uh, wipes or a moist um rag or towel and okay there's one and there you have it um let me just put the book in for final but you uh you have to you still have to dry this like i don't know um ideally overnight but the glue you should have it ready for use in a, I don't know, an hour or so. So this is the book, The Invisibles, right there. It's This is really heavy, guys, heavy book. Okay, The Invisibles. And then this is the front panel. Yeah. Or rather, this is the back panel. The front and the spine. That's one and a half hours. Okay, well, we are done. Thank you for watching, really. And um, and thanks to those who have um, asked me, requested to, you know, uh, build this, uh, you know, uh, film myself while doing this. It's been great and um, see you in the next video you you be good